Hey guys, I'm Tomu again. Now we're gonna dive a little bit further into what mind actually means. So there's four areas that we look at when it comes to um, us being able to control our mind. Our state of mind, uh, where we wanna be in a calm state. Pre-shot routine, the actual shot, and then what we do after we hit the golf shot. That's the, the framework of it all. So let's start with the calm state. So if you look at the game of golf, When's the last time we played well when we're aggravated, frustrated, annoyed, you know, those types of um, states of mind? I guarantee you it's probably never. Whenever we're in a happy or a calm state, this is probably when we play the best game of golf. When it comes to the states of mind, happy is something that just happens as a byproduct. We can't just flick a switch and go, I'm going to be happy. However, when it comes to calm, we can definitely get ourselves back into this state. So we would have heard the terminology, you know, calm down or take a breath, those types of things there. And that's gonna be definitely a strategy when it comes to getting into the state of calm is using some breath exercises. There's plenty of them out there. Um, they're all gonna be beneficial one way or the other. So try them all, see which one works uh, for you when it comes to getting into the state of calm. The next element here, the pre-shot, the shot, and then the actual post-shot, this is where we definitely find the biggest difference between the pro golfers and the person that's trying to break 100 or even 90 or 80 is, is in this element here. So we will dive a little bit deeper into what these pre-shot routines, the shots, uh, and then what golfers should be doing in a post-shot. So in a nutshell, a really simple way. So if we then look at calm, we're looking for some kind of breath work. Uh, Pre-shot routine is the ability to analyze what's happening in the environment that you're in. Uh, when it comes to the very fundamentals, we probably look at the lie of what your golf ball is doing. Um, we're commonly, you know, practicing off perfect lies, driving ranges and things like that. As soon as we get on the golf course, even just the subtle difference in the lie there can affect the other end of the golf shot. So we definitely believe that, you know, assessing the lie and then taking that into consideration, your perfect lie is going to create the perfect golf shot and imperfect lie is going to take some of that distance away. So, you know, when we start to um, be aware of those things and actually start to calculate that into the overall distance can make a massive difference. A shot is, you know, we want to create a feel, a golf swing takes less than two seconds to complete, so we want to rely on a feel rather than a thought. Uh, if we think of something when it comes to a golf swing, the swing's done, you know, so it's just not enough time. Post shot is the ability to close it all off. So we like to have a narrative of curiosity is a good one. Uh, and then also forgiveness is another good way of looking at this shot. So once the golf shot's done, looking up, we're not trying to fix it on the spot there or getting disappointed, it's looking at it going, hmm, that was interesting, I wonder what caused that. That train of thought will help create more positive, counter, um, more productive uh, trains of thought. Forgiveness, again, is a really good way of looking at it as well. We're not doing this for a living, we're doing it for fun. We're allowed to hit bad shots. Great shots come from poor shots. So if you hit a poor shot, it's the only opportunity you get to actually hit a great shot afterwards. Let's dive into the next one.